Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to go over the Apex Trader Funding series where it's all about the Beyond Your Balance Challenge. And the purpose of this series is just to show that with just $100, you can buy a $50,000 account or a bigger account and make thousands of dollars a month with that $100. And to do that, we got to 18 Apex accounts and we're just trading 20 accounts in total between my personal accounts and funding accounts. And the purpose of this series is just to get them all funded and then get the, the first payout and, and document all that there, showing the trades we take and the strategies that I'm using and just showing that you know you can use a, a few hundred dollars to manage hundreds of thousands of dollars in capital and then make thousands of dollars a month on that capital with that just starting a few hundred dollars as long as you have the skills and the discipline uh, from trading over time. So without further ado, let's let's dive into it. We're gonna go over the update, but real quick, uh, if you wanna learn all the strategies of how I personally trade, you can just click the link up in the cards. I made a video going over this just because I had a lot of people asking me how I personally trade, and then I'll go over it also at the end of this video. I'll show my strategies again. We're here to see the uh, 1.1 million in funding that I actually did secure. So we did pass uh, all of the accounts except for one, and we'll go into that. Before we do that though, there'll be a lot of numbers on the screen, but let's take a look at the first one here. So this this picture was the uh, after the first week. So after the first week, we had uh, no PA accounts. You see all Apex, Apex, Apex. So, you know, one week into the challenge, we made about $1,000. Uh, we had, most of the accounts were at 49,900 or 50,000. And then this account was already at like 51,000 or 52,000. So we made about 1,000 after the first week of this challenge. And this is what the account balance we're sitting at. And this is last week, yeah. So last week, which is the third week, we were here. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six PA accounts and profits in it. That's fast forwarding two weeks after that last picture I showed you. And then lots of them almost funded because you need a $3,000 profit target, almost funded. And now here we are just at the end of this week to start 2024. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 PA accounts with profit in half of them. Uh, the other half I haven't been trading as soon as I got them to PA account this past week. I'm just not trading it because the market conditions were not good this past week. And that's why I blew one of the accounts. So basically I got all of them funded. So Thursday I got all of them funded except for one, uh, one account and it needed a few hundred dollars. So I increased my size to try to get it in this one trade. The one trade didn't work out. So then I was down quite a bit going into Friday. Uh, when I say down quite a bit, I was the account balance was at 52,000 and I needed 52,000 to pass it. So Friday I was like, okay, it's Friday. I'm not gonna trade all of my accounts. Market conditions are probably not good, but if I see my setup, then I'll just increase my size and take it. So I increased my size uh, Friday, it was double the size, took it, was a loss, and then took a second one, double my size, was a loss, and that was the $2,500 drawdown, so I lost that account. No worries. Uh, basically, all I need to know is we got 17 funded in this challenge, and we lost one because we had 18 of them because I also I also trade two of my own personal accounts. So I trade 20 accounts at once. Since I lost the one, what did I do? Uh, you know, We had a good few trading weeks this past week. We made a lot, good amount of money this month even. December was a good month, so... I bought a 250k account, as you can see here. Uh, I haven't traded it yet, so we'll start to trade that in the new year. But we have um, $850,000 in funding from Apex. We have the uh, 250k elite account on Elite Trader Funding. Uh, you can show the stats here. Uh, we traded six days, balances 253,000. So Elite, this means that it is a real account. We passed this Elite ETF. And um, we passed it and the balance was 250, now it's 253. So the 850 plus the 250 is 1.1 million in funding and we got that in one month, all showcased here on YouTube. Honestly, it cost me about $2,000 because you have to pay for the account and then you also have to pay $100 to activate the account once it's a PA account. So basically, it costed me $2,000 to get 1.1 million in funding where now I can have super low risk and I can just, Whenever I make 1%, that's $11,000. So I can make a 1% trade, 1% trade win, small risk. Could risk half a percent, two to one, take a 1% uh, on all the accounts, boom, $11,000 profit. 
just one trade. So big success going into 2024 with 1.1 million in funding. Now, the moment you've probably been waiting for, but real quick, if you've been appreciating this, just hit that thumbs up button. It lets me know you love these kind of videos and I do really appreciate all your support. Next step is to document the journey to taking the first payouts from these accounts. One of them is almost already there. Actually, two accounts are already almost there for a payout, but I want to document this and just sh I want to try to get uh, a payout from every single account and then show that on here because that'll be a good sized payout. Um, but before we continue, let's go over my strategy now because you're probably wondering, okay, how did you do it, right? So I use the five minute and the one minute and I trade NQ, I trade price action. So basically when I say I trade price action, I'm looking at the market structure. And again, I linked the video at the beginning of this video, it just shares my strategy. But basically what I'm looking at, uh, the left hand is a five minute chart, right hand is a one minute chart. I'm looking at what's the overall market structure on the higher time frames, like the five minute and the 15 minute. And then I'm going into the one minute and I'm taking entries you know, based on the, the price action of the one minute. So an example of that <clears throat> would be, you know, pre-market, chopping around, we get this push uh, in, in the market open and you could argue we're bullish, but I don't like that we're below all this trading to the left here. So I consider us to be bearish. And there's two scenarios where you could take a trade. Uh, first bullish, uh, sorry, first bearish engulfing candle. Uh, when I was engulfing candle, highly likely to push price down to retest the lows. So we could take an entry there. Uh, I don't need you to do that, that's too soon. I like more of a confirmation and uh, it was tough Friday, but from what I like is I like to see a lower high confirmation and then a bearish engulfing candle again. So basically we had a high, we had a lower high, and then we had an engulfing candle here, 1015. Uh, if you wanted to look for a better engulfing candle, then you wait for 1020 because this one looks better. We don't have the wick against it. So after this 1020 candle close, we can say, okay, the direction to me is lower. We want to take out the lows. But do we enter here? No, I want to wait for a retracement. So that's when I look on the one minute chart and I say, okay, on the one minute chart, at this point, uh, we would get to about 10, 1024. When we're looking at that five minute candle, we'd be right here. So we don't want to short right here. We want to wait for a retracement into resistance to the left, take an entry, and then put our stops above the most recent swing high, 106, and target new lows. So basically what that would look like is I would wait on the one minute, we're trading here. I would wait for price to retrace up into here, uh, 1790, or up into this resistance left at 1795. So if I want to be aggressive, I would just take an entry at 1790. And then my stop loss would be above this recent high at 17104, uh, 106, sorry. And then my target would then be the lows, 935 candle low, which is at about uh, 1773. So that's an example of how we take a trade. I'm looking at where's the direction of five minute, where does price wanna go based on the five minute or the 15 minute? And then when I, when I find out the direction, then I wait for the one minute chart to retrace into an area to take an entry. And if it leaves without me, I miss the trade. So that's how I can get it in a short there. Um, after the low is taken out though, very hard to get an entry because at this point it went so low that you're at risk of us retracing all the way up into the left. So you wouldn't want to short here because you could just get retracement all the way back up. Didn't do that though, continued down. But that was basically the trade on Friday. So. I'll go over one more scenario. We'll go back to Wednesday or Thursday. So going back to Thursday, so over the one minute chart here, Thursday, and then the five minute chart here. Thursday, you can clearly see, we started selling off here at pre-market, went bearish. Okay, so we're bearish. Price from nine to 9.30 is retracing up into this bearish block. So on the one minute, I'd be looking for uh, an engulfing candle. So there's two things I could do. So number one is I can say, okay, we're bearish. Let me wait for market open. Market opens, and I could just wait for us to trade into 17,157 um, or 17,150. Take an entry anywhere between there and target the lows. Why? Because we we went bearish and we're retracing. So if we're bearish still and we're ret retracing, then we want to get in an entry anywhere around 50%. Sometimes we use fib retracement. So basically from the sell-off. Anywhere around 50% is a good entry. 618 is even better. So I could get an entry at 17,150, which is the FIB, and I would short there, and then I could uh, go for the, the lows, right? But I'll show you what I do instead. I don't just take the blind position. So the stop would be above this swing high to the left here, and then the target would be below these lows. So I don't 
it's another one to one. So yes, that's why I said in my last video, most of my trades are one to ones, and this trade worked out beautifully. So what I end up doing though is I wait for a one minute candle to close with the direction that I want. So I would basically wait for this candle right here. So I would take the entry after this. Because why? So we're bearish in the five minute, we're retracing, retracing, retracing. We have to wait for market open. Market opens, 9.30 candle pushes up and has a doji. Next one, 9.31 pushes up and closes bearish engulfing. Boom, enter on the bearish engulfing. Move my stop above the one minute high because I like the wicks, looks like it's good. And then target the lows on the five minutes. So this this is something how I would trade more like more so. And this is how it'd still take a one to one, but it's just higher probability because we have the confirmation of the candle on the one minute as well. Instead of taking the blind position when it retraces up before the one minute candle closes. So I hope that makes a lot of sense. That is the another a way that I personally trade uh, based on you know, using price action on multiple time frames. And that's how I've been able to get these accounts funded. So follow along the journey to the next video. Let me know if you love these kind of videos. It lets me know that you like them because then I can create more of them and post them more often. But that's going to conclude this one. So just look out for the next video coming out Wednesday night where I go over uh, price action and I share more strategies. And then look out for the next video on the weekend where I cover and see you know, if we're close to that first payout or if we blew some accounts. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and um, I'll see you in the next video.